Hi, my name is Dolly Weber. I'm 62 years old and I've been a believer for most of my life. In uh, 1984, I experienced divorce. And as a result of that experience and calling upon the Lord as to what was going on, of course, I felt that I should receive my own condemnation as everybody else put on me. Uh, he showed me something totally knew about the whole topic. And as a result of that journey that he took me on, he gave me a book to write, which I did so in 1985 called Divorce of the Heart. Many, many people have read that book and have told me that it ministers to them in a variety of ways, not only in their earthly marriage, but also concerning their marriage with the Lord. But, you know, unless I am around somebody who is seemingly trapped in a situation where they feel that there is no way out as a Christian, I kind of live my own life and I don't really think about it too much. But actually in the last week, uh, two events occurred in my life, tiny events, but I knew that the Lord was saying it's time for me to get this message out. Um, the first was uh, when I was at a thrift store and I happened to see a book called Battered into Submission, The Tragedy of Wife Abuse in the Christian Home. And this book is written by James Alsdorf and Phyllis Alsdorf. And that touched my heart. I, all I had to do was see the title and, and it pricked me. Um, I think it was within the same day or possibly the next day I happened to read a report titled that said that the power company that had been contracted to get the power back on Puerto Rico, on the island of Puerto Rico, was not going to do so. And immediately I thought to myself, oh my goodness, what a horrible thing to do. What a bad company, et cetera, et cetera. So admittedly, with a bit of ire in me, I clicked on that report, and lo and behold, <laughs> there was another side of the story. It explained that the government of Puerto Rico had failed to pay the company so far $83 million of the $300 million contract. So again, hearing one side of the covenant and hearing the report of one of the parties reneging, I immediately assumed that they were the one at fault, when apparently that may not be the case. At that point, the Lord again reminded me about the whole topic of divorce of the heart, as he reminded me that marriage, too, is a contract. It's a, it's a covenant. It's a two-way covenant. And that was the beginning of what the Lord showed me in regards to those believers who are in a situation where they would call it a marriage or other people would call it a marriage. They had a ceremony or they signed a marriage certificate. They have a marriage certificate. They have rings on their fingers. They cohabit. Maybe they don't cohabit at this point, but they are still legally married. And let's talk about Christians here, um, particularly uh, a, a woman and a man, both of whom claim to be Christians. And maybe they do actually have a relationship with the Lord, and maybe they don't. Um, but what the Lord showed me in a nutshell is that it is a covenant. And one cannot uphold that part of the covenant by themselves. Um, along the way, back in 1984, a dear woman, a Christian, a woman who, uh, a believer, a true believer filled with the Holy Spirit, said to me, she said, you know, God was involved in a divorce. And I didn't realize that. So sure enough, in Isaiah 50, uh, God himself is referring to a certificate of divorce that he gave his wife, Israel. So that got my attention while I was indeed coming under severe judgment by many, many people. I had physically left my husband when things had become actually fearful for me. I was working in a church at a time, and so was he. He was the associate pastor, and I was the director of music there and had a very 
um, blessed and flourishing music ministry there, uh, ministering and getting a lot of uh, other music ministers um, on their on their feet, so to speak, and 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 they were going out, but. Um, I was not aware of certain things such that when people judged me, I thought, well, Lord, I don't blame them. <laughs> I would judge myself. Uh, and then one day I was reading the Bible and I was just so excited about the new experience that I had uh, having received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I, I just couldn't read the Bible enough. Um, I had read Nehemiah 8.10. I had this verse on a piece of paper, and I know to this day that the Holy Spirit changed the letters of Nehemiah to Jeremiah. And so I looked up the verse Jeremiah 8.10, and to my shock, it said, Therefore I will give their wives to other men. I thought, what in the world? So I looked at the first part of that chapter, and I realized, wait, the Lord's talking about not in death. He's talking about the men are still alive, but they're religious men and they are not listening to the Lord. And God is actually saying he's going to, to give their wives away. So I, I took this, um, it got my attention, but I said, Lord, I, I obviously I'm not going to act on anything. I was separated at the time. Every day I said, Lord, I'm willing to go back into the house. What do you want? And yet I, I've got so much peace. And it was soon after that move out of the house that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was all so new. And it, and it didn't make sense to me at the time. But I, I knew if I seek the Lord, he will show me. So eventually the Lord showed me that, yes, it, this is a covenant. Marriage is a covenant. It's a covenant in the heart. And we have a hint of that where he said, if a man looks at a woman lustfully in his heart, he has committed adultery with her. And I remember having a, a brief uh, discussion with my ex-husband, that husband who had gone through seminary, and um, I believe he was in seminary at the time, but I had taken note of that verse. I said, you know, he, the, it's saying he has committed adultery. It's not as bad as he's committed adultery. He has committed adultery. And he didn't want to really acknowledge that, not that he himself was engaging in, uh, you know, anything physical with women. I, I had no doubt about that, that he was not. But it was the principle of it. And even back then, the Lord was showing me that, yes, he is looking at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And yes, it's true that although God had made promises to Israel, many promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, I, will, I will be faithful to you. I will provide for you. Uh, none of these de diseases will come upon you, but they were contingent on her faithfulness to him. And I would like to present all of these things. I, I mean, it was just an incredible journey that the Lord took me on through the word where it's clear that he is looking at the heart and looking at what is covenant in, in terms of what's really intact between the husband and wife and what is not. Um, we also have another hint of that, Malachi 5, where the Lord uh, is talking to the men of Israel. And he's saying, you, you come to me and you, you're praying and you come to me with tears and you wonder why I'm not hearing you, why I'm not answering. And the Lord says, because I am acting as a witness between you and the wife of your youth. You don't listen to her, so I'm not going to listen to you. So we've got a very, very situa serious situation here where the Lord's not fooling around. And if he would actually say to the men of Israel, look, uh, you guys are like horses charging into battle. I'm talking about that passage in Jeremiah 8. Uh, you're like horses charging into battle and you're not looking, you don't even look back to see if I'm approving, if I'm leading you anything. You, you've got wayward hearts, you're selfish hearts. You have no relationship with me. Therefore, I am going to give your wives to other men, to more deserving men. And he did. Ezra 
sought the Lord at a time when Israel's relationship with him had declined. It was practically non-existent. And Ezra sought the Lord. What do you want me to do, Lord? I, I want, we want to return to you. Uh, we need to. We have to. And the Lord told him the first thing he was to do was to have the men of Israel divorce their foreign wives and their children. What? All we ever hear is God hates divorce. And yet God told him to tell the men of Israel to divorce their foreign wives. Yes. There's a whole other picture in the mind and heart of the Lord when it comes to divorce and when it comes to marriage than the church will ever portray to you. And yes, after I experienced what I did and daily, I would say, Lord, I, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to go back to the house. I'm willing to go back to the house. And he didn't lead me back to the house for a year. And I would like to share that story at some point. But during that time, he showed me an entirely different picture, not only of how he views marriage on earth, but also he showed me he has an entirely different picture about our relationship with him and those that in one day when he comes, they will be left behind and they will call to him, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? Why, why aren't we coming with you? And he will say, I never knew you, never knew you. So there are clear parallels here that we have people that are in a semblance of an earthly marriage, just like there are people in a semblance of a relationship with the Lord. And in the Lord's eyes, it doesn't even exist. And my burden is for all believers, not only to come to terms with where they really are with the Lord, and, and that's really the most important part of this, to, to realize that the Lord's not impressed by going to church, having a Bible every, in every room of the house, having uh, pretty placards in your house with Bible verses on them and so forth. He's looking at the heart. Where's your heart? Do you look daily to please him, to find out what would please him? Is there, do you pray to him? He said, the scripture says to pray constantly. Do you? In all your ways acknowledge him? Do you think about him and talk to him throughout the day? And similarly, the Lord is looking at those relationships. And I guess there's a part of me that is looking at the female side, many of those in many cases, because there is a verse having to do with reminding, hey, women, remember, Remember to be, have a submissive spirit because all believers are supposed to be submissive to one another. Um, that that he, he reminds those women because he's just told their husbands to love their, love their wives as Christ loved the church. In other words, he just told those husbands, hey, you'd be willing to lay your life down for your wife. And it, at the same time, he's reminding the wife, remember, you know, I'm calling all my children to have a submissive spirit, and that means you too, so don't you get bossy with him. And how that's been turned around to, no, wives, obey your husband? No, it's, it's not what the scripture says. And really, there was no difference in what the writer is saying to the women in being submissive. We're supposed to be submissive all to one another. So it wasn't just directed at her. Mm -hmm. But again, if somebody has a man that is loving his wife the way the Lord wants to, she needs to guard her heart that she does not become bossy and presumptuous and all those things. So there is a whole other story that the church and that most of Christians don't know that the Lord wants to be known, especially in this last day. He's called us to peace. He does not want any of his children in bonds. And for those of you that are sticking out a marriage because you think that's what God wants and that the only way that he would have you end that marriage or step out of that marriage would be in death, whether by you or your spouse, guess what? 
That's not the case. The phrase, till death do us part, that's a Hollywood phrase. Even God himself didn't say that. Even God said, if you are faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. If you acknowledge me in your ways, you know, after a while, Israel was so unfaithful to him, he did give her a certificate of divorce, and he didn't speak to her for 400 years. So we're talking about a God who is not putting up with play acting, and he's not putting up with one-sided contracts, particularly if there are husbands that are saying, that are not loving their wives as Christ loved the church. And yet they are expecting out of their wives obedience, which is not even in scripture, or expecting that she's going to have a submissive spirit toward him when he's not doing anything of his part of the contract. God doesn't want that to go on. And I have scriptures to share with you from my book. And hopefully the Lord can use this to stir up for you the idea that he is a God of everything. And we, I can't tell you to leave any more than I can tell you to stay. But I know someone who has both options in his hands. And whatever option he gives a believer, you will see the fruit, his fruit in that option. And he wants to give you peace one way or another. But for those of you who feel that you're stuck and you're caught and there is no way out. I've got good news for you. The author of marriage has something to share with you about it. And in the months ahead, I would like to share with you the various chapters of my book that are all scriptural and I share the scriptures that hopefully will give you hope and excitement that the Lord is going to call you out one way or another and you will feel his presence and his peace in whatever he has you do. So stay subscribed to my channel. I will probably have just the same thumbnail, uh, Divorce of the Heart, which is the, um, right now it's the front cover of the book <laughs> that I've chosen for it. But um, uh, this is what I would like to do. And incidentally, the book, I published it by taking it to printers and copying it over and over and over and over. That's how it was published in the past because I never had the, um, initially I took it to Christian publishers and well, there were two and they said, basically it's a good book. It's well written, but on the marketing of it, they, they didn't want to take it. And now that was back in the nineties and they probably, uh, if someone reviewed it and said, well, the book is might be saying that there are instances where divorce and leaving, uh, physically leaving are okay, which, which it is. That, that is what it's saying because the Lord is, it, it wants to call it for what it is. If, if that's what he tells someone that this marriage is no longer a marriage, come out, then that's what you do. But anyway, they didn't want to take it on. But the gentleman who was at Faith Printing, actually. His name was Ravnell Scott. He looked at the book. I asked him, could he give me his opinion about it? And he ended up reading the book, he said. He, he called me a month later and he said, you know, I get a lot of books, especially books on divorce across my desk. And I'll tell you, usually I don't get past the first page. But your book, I read cover to cover. And I want to tell you that it is the best book I've ever read on the subject of marriage and divorce. And then he proceeded to ask me if he could copy it for a friend of his in his 60s at the time that was going through a divorce. And Ravenel gave me the leads, some a couple of contacts, uh, which were those Christian publishers. And uh, as I said, they, they didn't go anywhere at the time. But this is a timely message. And the book that I saw, yeah, there are women who are battered into submission. No more in the name of Jesus. No one batters anybody into submission. And if the husband is not even submissive, being a servant to somebody is more than submission. It's more submissive than submission. The husband is already beyond submission to his wife if he is in obedience in the covenant. So I come against this stronghold. In the Christian world, especially in the United States, in the name of Jesus, I break the chains of those right now 
in marriages that are no longer marriages. And I ask the, the Lord that you will help your true believers, your true sheep in those situations to call upon you, knowing that you are a God of peace, you are a God of restoration, you are a God of all those things, and that you will lead them to peace if they seek you with their whole heart. In Jesus' name, God bless you, and I look forward to the next one.